What's up Raiders, Bionic here, welcome to the channel. Today's Raid Shadow Legends video is going to be about Ice Golem level 20 on auto at a 100% success rate, or at least up until now. Uh, right now was the perfect time to test it, we have this ongoing Ice Golem tournament. I'm currently first, that won't hold up for long because I've pretty much used all of my energy that I have for now, but at least it's given plenty of time to test my new build. Like the other video of this series, what I'll do is I'll go over a run, I'll talk a little bit about it, I might cut it because they are still pretty long, and then I'll go over the builds of each of the champions that I am using for this run. First off, let's grab this reward, 100 silver, and that's always very useful. And then what I'll do, uh, I'll show you guys sort of what I've tried out so far and uh, what I've settled with. Because I can now get about 5 minutes and 14 seconds. Actually, that was my best run, but I'm averaging more around 6 minutes to hit that 100% success rate. So uh, here's my fastest run. It was 5 minutes and 14 seconds. As you can see, only one poisoner. I was providing buffs for my seer as well as using royal guard, but this then did not have a 100% success rate. So uh, I kind of dropped that. Then I tried something a little different, maybe something with a little bit more survivability. Same thing here, just providing buffs for my seer as well as using a royal guard. Again, it was very fast, but not 100% success rate. Then, uh, this is not mine, this one here where uh, it's very similar but I've tried using a Steel Skull for a little bit more poison, uh, but once again, not a 100% success rate. So as you can see, like trying to use the enemy max HP skills, uh, it does make it faster, but it does also make it very hard to uh, guarantee that you will not die. And then here's sort of my best builds. Uh, using poison, using Apothecary, Arbiter, and now Tormund because I finished building him. He is adding a lot of survivability uh, in a stun set. If you don't have this guy, then use a Bellower in a stun set. That also works very well. And then we have uh, Apothecary in a shield set. So these three champions are adding uh, the survivability that I need to get through the dungeon. And then my Poisoners. I tried a bunch of different Poisoners. Uh, it didn't really improve on the time. It was and sometimes less consistent. Uh, Steel Skull is, it, it really wasn't better than, let's say, uh, using Apothecary instead. So a third Poisoner, I can already fill up the poisons with just these two. And in the absence of a very good AoE Poisoner, like a Dracomorph or Tomb Lord, I believe, um, you have to use uh, random ability skills, such as Kale's A2, A2 and then uh, Occult Brawler's uh, Passive. If you use something that's more directed, like a Steel Skull, it, he just won't put enough poison up on the boss once you reach him uh, fast enough. And what I've done is I've set up my Kale to be very tanky, or just a lot of survivability, and in a toxic set. Which means these two guys kind of fill up the 10 slots of debuffs on the boss relatively fast. So this is not mine. Here's another example. I tried to use a Seer. It just wasn't consistent. Uh, I tried to use a Xavia. She doesn't use her A3 uh, when the adds are up on the boss. It's kind of weird. Uh, she does have the affinity weakness, which means some of those poisons don't land when they should. So it's just, it wasn't really working out. And besides, she's a lot harder to get, to get than let's say an Apothecary, which is doing a slightly better job in my uh, setup right now. So decided to drop her. Uh, here's another example of, of what a run might end up being. So 6 minute and 42. So like I said, it's not always 100% consistent. A little bit more here. Uh, again, tried with Steel Skull, not that great. Back with Seer. And then here's an example where I removed Kale, tried to use Steel Skull instead. As you can see, by not having the random ability Poison, it's not landing on the boss often enough. So it's just really not that much faster. Uh, and here's my old, old build where I just wanted to complete the missions. As you can see, 15 minutes and 30 seconds. I think I have even another one that's even worse. 23 minutes. But this is what I had to use in order to complete it. Uh, but now, like I said, I am down to about, I'll say on average, between 6 and 7 minutes. Okay, so let's jump into a run and I will explain to you guys what is going on. So as I said, my torment in a stun set very tanky. Uh, we've got Arbiter, just full speed, but also quite tanky. Apothecary in a shield set and speed set, also very tanky. 
we've got a tanky kale in a toxic set and then i've got my cult brawler built for the clan boss who's in a life steal and immortal set so like i said i probably won't let this finish i just want to show you guys the waves uh because they do take a very long time i don't have a decreased defense i don't have enemy max hp aoe skills which means it it's literally just about adding a lot of debuffs and uh like waiting for those poisons to do all the damage basically uh, but you will see how torment adds so much control over the waves by doing the aoe stun and his aoe freeze so uh, I, like I said, just finished building him. I'm also using him in the arena now. I have not done his skills until I uh, will know what the nerf is, but I have done his masteries. So that is something I just completed. Uh, so I'm really happy to start using him. He literally just kind of replaced, like I said, my Bellor. So uh, as you can see, it's long, but at least it is working. Um, at this point, like I said, when I tried a Xavia for this part, it was a little bit faster, but the Deadly Catalyst skill, I believe, which is the AoE that deals all the poison damage at the same time, or like uh, half the poison damage uh, all in one shot, sometimes doesn't work because if you get a weak hit, I think it doesn't trigger. That happened a lot on the boss, so uh, like I said, that's why I decided not to use her, even though she's my only decent AoE poisoner. But anyway, so uh, as, you can, as you can see, a minute 30 to clear the first wave, and it's basically the same thing to clear the second one. All right, and now here we are at the boss. So um, I'll just pause this for a quick second. Oh, sorry, pause this from here. And I'll quickly explain what I mean about uh, the random ability skills, which is probably your best bet in the absence of a strong AOE poisoner. And there isn't a lot of options uh, considering the affinity. Like I said, I think you have a Draco Morph and a Tomb Lord. But basically this skill here, the Zintegrate, disintegrate from uh, Kale where it attacks four times at random and it is a 5% poison debuff for two turns. So that is going to help into adding some poisons on the boss before the adds are down and if you have him in a toxic set as you can see here it is going to trigger the toxic set as well which means you're, you're basically getting two chances of adding a 5% and a 2.5% poison. And then we'll move up to the uh, yeah the Occult Brawler and basically same thing here has a 70% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff on a random enemy for four turns at the start of each turn so again this is something we're hoping that is going to land on the boss so we can start filling up those poison debuffs all right um, and then like uh, the uh, Torment right now doing all the CC as you can see that stun is really working wonders into uh, removing some of the stress on the team for uh, the heals like our Apothecary and if somebody does go down then we have our arbiter to help us out and res them right back up uh we have the added bonus from uh, occult brawler brawler as well if if he manages to use his a2 on an enemy that has enough debuffs or if he has enough debuffs on himself then it will trigger the block res it does happen but very rarely it's not the reason uh, that i put him in there it's really just because of the random ability of his uh poison now what's also going to happen is that once the adds are down uh i'm actually going to have too much poison for the boss because of the toxic set kale and occult brawler it's going to fill up those 10 slots like i said before but that's all right because up until that point we're getting added chances of putting poisons on the boss so it's that much quicker so at this point we're hoping that we're going to put enough poisons to load up the boss and that they all trigger before he gets to do his frigid vengeance skill because that's basically what can kill you uh, in this dungeon is the fact that if he gets two turns back to back because of him using his actual uh, turn meter or using the frigid vengeance skills once he hits the threshold which I, I believe it's 80 60 45 30 and then 15 percent or something like that um, all right so here we go so far pretty lucky it has not happened we didn't trigger the frigid vengeance so looking like a decent run in terms of speed uh, but then we'll know in a couple seconds because the problem is that 
My Occult Brawler also has War Master, so does my Arbiter right now, and so does my Kale. I could re uh, do their masteries to remove this and prevent perhaps the Frigid Vengeance from happening more often, but because I use them elsewhere and sometimes I did use them in the clan boss, it's just not worth it really. But you saw it there again, it didn't trigger, so I got lucky with my poisons, and that's really what you want. Uh, the secret to Ice Golem is really just using the poisons, and in this case, like I'm showing here, you don't necessarily need a very good AoE poisoner, it does really help out, but still you can get away with using two uh, decent single target poisoners, so as long as they have the random ability skills. There we have it again, another poison take, and we did not get the Frigid Vengeance, and that's pretty much gonna do it for the boss. He's gonna go down, and this will be about a seven minute run. So not the best time, but at least it worked out perfectly. All right, and now let's do the champion builds really quick. So as I said, my Tormund is in a stun set as well as Immortal. This is not good. Don't do this, guys, if you're going to use him in the arena because it is triggering a heal. And if you face another Tormund, then it does add an extra chance for him to do his passive and freeze your ass. So uh, unfortunately, this is all I had that had decent stats in terms of speed. Uh, but anyway, I, I do plan on changing this in the future. Perhaps a resistance set would be very good here to increase his resistance. Uh, the accuracy is relatively low, but for gold tier 4 or perhaps even one day low platinum, I think it's alright. I can still increase this with the uh, accuracy banner. The Great Hall is maxed out for my accuracy on void. Uh, these skills, like I said, are not leveled. I would love to completely max him out, but I will wait until the nerf and these are the masteries I am using on him for now. Then we've got Arbiter, I've showed her before, she has not changed, she's in a full speed set, I did get these new gloves for her which are defense based, I still have not leveled them more, I'm waiting for an artifact enhancement event. All of her skills are fully leveled, I think she's really worth it, and these are the masteries I am using on her right now. Still hasn't changed, like I said, I was using her against the clan boss before. Then we've got Occult Brawler. This is his setup for the clan boss that I have uh, right now. Defense gloves, attack chest. Uh, so you do need survivability against the clan boss, I agree, but this guy actually hits really hard. So if you can actually build some attack with uh, some crit rate and crit damage, it'll increase your damage output. But then again, it's hard to find a right balance between just how much defense do you need to get first. So I think for my case, he is actually a little bit low. I would like this to be obviously uh, closer to around 3000, but still maintain a decent amount of attack and with these stats. The accuracy obviously is a very important. Uh, his skills are almost all for the level. I got screwed on the last one and I got the reduced cooldown here, which I think overall an auto is affecting your damage output against a clan boss. But uh, hey, it is what it is, and these are the masteries that I am using on him right now. Then we've got the Kale, who I just built this morning to try this out. Uh, he is using, like I said, a toxic set. It was just about basically grabbing some of the best pieces that I have. Uh, a lot of survivability, so a defense chest, HP percent gloves, uh, a good chunk of HP here. Then we've got some speed on the boots. Uh, a little bit more accuracy and speed here on the weapon. We've got HP ring, a defense amulet, and a accuracy banner, which is the one that I'm using on my cold heart. I don't have enough Dark Elves accuracy banners, so I do move things around when I'm doing a specific dungeon. Uh, that is something that most likely a lot of low spending or free-to-play players might end up having to do. Uh, it's just very hard for us to keep uh, full teams geared for each of the dungeons. But anyway, his skills fully leveled long time ago, and these are the masteries. Again, War Master, because I was using him against the clan boss before. And finally, our Apothecary, who is in the shield set. I've shown him before as well. Nothing has changed. You do want enough speed, lots of HP, decent defense. I think this guy, yeah, defense ring, defense amulet, HP banner. So uh, very straightforward, HP chest, HP gloves, which are six star, one of my very rare six star uh, rank six items. Uh, decent amount of crit rate for that crit heal. And then mast uh, skills fully done and masteries with Giant Slayer, because like I said, I was using him against the clan boss before. So there you have it guys, my new 
Ice Golem level 20 build with reasonably accessible champions. And I say reasonably because Arbiter you can get a uh, for, for sure. Uh, Tormund you could have gotten through a fusion, perhaps not for newer players, but I did get him as free to play. Apothecary, uh, obviously over time, over a year's worth of time, you will most likely pull him. Then I got a Kale, which could have been your starter champion. It wasn't mine, but I did end up getting him through a uh, shard. And finally, a Cold Prowler, which is a decent poisoner epic, probably the hardest champion to get in this list. But still, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the new build that I'm using. Let me know what you guys think, obviously. And uh, thank you so much for watching, as always. And I will catch you guys later.